Okay, guys. I, like I said, I'm proud to, to be a coach in the Eastern Division here. I think we're the best division in the, uh, in the IHL here. Uh, you guys should all be proud to, to be in this game. You worked real hard to get here. And, uh, you know, let's go show that, uh, that Western team who the best division is here in, uh, in the IHL. All right, boys? And, and have a good time out there. Have some fun and, uh, you know, play with your heads and uh, don't get hurt out there. Live from the Omni in Atlanta, the Atlanta Knights present the International Hockey League's 1992 All-Star Game. Tonight, we'll see the stars of the IHL's East and West Divisions competing against each other in the first All-Star Game since 1984. The IHL, a prime developmental league of the National Hockey League, features the young stars of the future. Hello, everybody. I'm Ken Double, the voice of the Indianapolis Ice of the IHL. Thrilled to be here for this All-Star Game and happy to be working with the Ice head coach, John Marks. A great with the Chicago Blackhawks for 10 years, coached for four years in the International League at Kalamazoo, now with Indianapolis. And, John, we're going to see a lot of outstanding young players. I think we are, uh, Ken. There's a lot of talent on the ice. I think tonight is a big night for each individual. It's a night of opportunity. There's people here from the National Hockey League, and maybe somebody uh, will be in the NHL tomorrow or a week from now. And that is the opportunity these young skaters have here. A couple of interesting stories as far as the West team. A youngster, the youngest skater on the ice tonight, 19-year-old Ray Whitney out of San Diego. This kid can play. Uh, he's quick. Uh, he shoots the puck while he sees the ice. Uh, he can put the puck in the net, and uh, I really uh, think he's an exciting player. I've seen him a couple of times, and uh, he's given our team fits. An interesting story in that perhaps he should be with Kansas City. We'll tell you a little bit about that later on. The oldest player on the ice tonight plays for the East squad. Scott Gruel, long time with Muskegon, now with Fort Wayne. He scored a goal in the last All-Star game in 1984, and he's having another great year. He's having a great year, Ken. Uh, I think Scott's got to be very proud of himself. Uh, having played for this length of time and put the numbers on the board that he has and to be here tonight has got to be a big thrill for him. The third member of our broadcast crew is the voice of the Salt Lake City Golden Eagles. His name is Mike Barrick and he will be featured throughout the course of the evening with special reports during the game. Mike? Thank you very much Ken and as you can see we're here in the Eastern Division locker room prior to the game here tonight, the 17th International Hockey League All-Star Game. As this game uh, progresses here this evening, I'll have a chance to talk to some of the key personnel, some of the players, some of the coaches as this game progresses. And I think one of the interesting features of this game tonight will be a chance for you fans to see the goaltender, Mike O'Neill of the Fort Wayne Comets and what it's like from the goaltender's perspective. We have a special goaltender's cam and you'll be able to see the Western Division shooters on the Fort Wayne goaltender. And I think that will be a very interesting feature for the fans here tonight. Should be a tremendous evening here at the Omni in Atlanta, and we'll go back to Ken Double and John Marks. Go ahead, guys. Thank you very much, Mike. The International Hockey League consists of ten teams in two five-team divisions. Eight of the ten teams are affiliated with National Hockey League clubs. Kansas City is an affiliate of the new San Jose Sharks. Peoria is the top affiliate for the St. Louis Blues. Phoenix feeds players to the Los Angeles Kings. Salt Lake City's Golden Eagles are affiliated with Calgary. San Diego is an independent team. The Gulls in their second year in the IHL and doing very, very well. The East Division is made up of the Fort Wayne Comets, an independent team on a long, long tradition of providing hockey to the fans in Fort Wayne. The Indianapolis Ice is affiliated with the Chicago Blackhawks. Kalamazoo is affiliated with Minnesota. Milwaukee is the top farm club for Vancouver. And Muskegon is affiliated with the NHL's champions, the defending champion, Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, let's join the public address announcer, Ed Hammond, for the introduction of the IHL All-Stars. Here are the participants for tonight's International Hockey League All-Star Game. First for the East Division, coaches Al Sims from the Fort Wayne Comets and Phil Russell from the Muskegon Lumberjacks. The trainers from the Fort Wayne Comets, Joe Franke, and from the Muskegon Lumberjacks, Corky Osborne. East Division players from the Fort Wayne Commons. Starting center, number 26, Colin Chin. <laughs> Starting right wing, number 24, Scott Gruel. <laughs> Starting goalie for the East, number 30, Mike O'Neill. 
And starting left defenseman number seven, Jean-Marc Richard. From the Indianapolis Ice, number three, Jeff Serka. Number 21, Mike Stapleton. Starting left wing, number nine, Sean Williams. From the Kalamazoo Wings, number 29, Brad Berry. Number 11, Steve Goddess. Number 17, Steve Malte. Number 12, Mitch Messier. From the Milwaukee Admirals, number eight, Andrew McBain. Number 14, Eric Murano. Number 18, Rob Murphy. Number four, Phil Von Stefanelli. From the Muskegon Lumberjacks, number 15, Jock Callender. Starting right defenseman, number six, Gord Deneen. Number one, Rob Dobson. Number 27, Dave McKaylet. And number 25, Todd Nelson. The East Division All-Stars. There you have the East Division All-Stars in the traveling red uniforms. And uh, the West Division All-Stars are the home team in this game tonight. And that's because when the Atlanta Knights join the International Hockey League next season, they will play in the Western Division. And now our IHL West Division All-Stars. From the Kansas City Blades, starting right wing number 20, Jeff Medill. Starting left defense, number six, Pat McLeod. Number one, Artur Urbe. Starting goaltender, number 33, Wade Flaherty. Starting center, number 15, Gary Emmons. From the Peoria Riverman, number 25, Dominic Lavoie. Number 16, Dave Mackey. Number 7, Brian McKee. Number 26, Steve Tuttle. From the Phoenix Roadrunners, starting right defenseman, number 5, Rene Chapdelaine. Starting left wing, number four, Sean McCosh. Number 31, Sean White. From the Salt Lake City Golden Eagles, number 28, Todd Harkins. Number nine, Sean Hafey. Number three, Kevin Wartman. From the San Diego Gulls, number 23, Alan Heppel. Number 12, Robbie Nichols. And number eight, Ray Whitney. At the players' benches, the coaches and trainers for the West Division All-Stars. Coach from the Kansas City Blades, Kevin Costantine. And head coach of the San Diego Gulls, Don Waddell. Trainers for the West Division, trainer from the Kansas City Blades, Tim Leroy, and trainer from San Diego, Larry Roberts, the IHL West Division All-Stars.
Kevin Constantine, the coach of the West out of Kansas City. John, you brought him into hockey. <laughs> uh, Kevin was uh, the assistant uh, at Kalamazoo uh, under me for three years, and and uh, I don't know if the student uh, learned more than the teacher or not, but he's doing a tremendous job. Kansas City in their second year having a spectacular run so far this season. We're just moments away from the start of this hockey game, and now we're ready for the presentation of the national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hear at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled at the Omni, and then the fireworks. The Atlanta Knights wanting to do it in spectacular fashion for the All-Star game. Looks like a good start to a fine evening, Ken. I think the fans are getting into it early. Just the way we want it. A little excitement, and perhaps the fireworks will continue when we get down to the ice and get ready for hockey action in just a moment. Coverage of tonight's game is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that distinctively clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a Bud. It was just another Saturday afternoon until those old guys came out of the woods with axes. Just when they thought it couldn't get any weirder, it did. their own music. Awesome! Hey fellas, how about a cold five? A bud? Obviously, we thought alike. Oh, that's cold. A full season of checking, slap shooting, and goal scoring comes to the Omni this year. Don't miss out on the inaugural season of the Atlanta Knights as they face off in the head-to-head, hard-hitting, hot hockey action of the International Hockey League. Get ready to light up the Knights. Season tickets on sale now. Call 525-8900. 525-8900. It's nighttime. Following the fireworks, we're just about ready to play hockey as we... Come back to the Omni in Atlanta. They're rolling up some of the carpeting and matting that was down on the ice. There you have a look at the referee for tonight's game. Dan O'Halloran in his third year in the NHL training program, 27 years old, grew up in Essex, Ontario. And Dan will be mic'd during the course of the game, and we think that will be interesting. I talked to uh, Dan prior to tonight's game. I asked him if he was going to do anything different uh, than he uh, than the regular season. He said, no, it's back to work. It's a normal game. He said, I had my uh, pregame meal of Zeta, uh, which is, I guess, like a Mastacholi. So it's a regular game for uh, Dan and the linesmen, and uh, I think uh, they will uh, call it like they see it. Andy McKelman and Jay Jacobs, the linesman, and there you see Mike O'Neill from the Fort Wayne Comets. He's five foot seven, 155 pounds, 24 years old, and in 25 games, he's 17, five and two. He's recorded four shutouts already this year, a sparkling 2.93 goals against average starting for the East. He's got the uh, night cam, that camera attached to the goalie helmet as you get a look at 
what he is gun. seeing directly through his helmet and will have a most oh, interesting view of the game through the goalie. And that's Scott Cruel, one of the All-Stars, having a little fun with his teammate from Fort Wayne. Now, there you see Wade Flaherty out of Kansas City. He gets the start for the West All-Stars, 5'11", 160-pounder, just 23 years old. Also having an outstanding season, 19-9-1 in 29 games of action, a 3.07 goals against average. And John, a stat that you're interested in, more important than goals against average, the save percentage, and he's at 90%. Well, it means that he's uh, making nine saves out of every ten shots that's at him, but it can be a little deceiving. Where are those shots coming from? Are they from 15 feet out right in front of him, or are they from 35, 40 feet from the angle? Uh, a high save percentage generally means that he's got some good okay. defense playing in front of him also. With the night cam being mic'd, talking to me? the referee is being mic'd, all right. Al Sims, the East go, head coach, All-Stars, is being mic'd. It's going to create a most interesting opportunity for you fans at home to uh, get right in the midst of all this action right on the ice. I like the shot right now with the night cam. You uh, folks are going to be able to see shots coming at 90 miles an hour and how a goaltender has to react. Let's again go downstairs to Mike Barrick. Mike? Well, uh, we're here at the Omni. You can see a very, very good crowd here tonight. The last NHL game played at the Omni was the 1980 playoff season. The Atlanta Flames losing to the New York Rangers. Back up to Ken, and it should be fun here tonight. And we're just about ready to start this hockey game. The West All-Stars in the white uniforms will move offensively to the left as you look at the screen. And the East in the red offensively to the right. Has Scott Gruel, number 24, right in the middle of the screen in red, decided to forego his helmet tonight? That surprises Apparently me. Apparently so. Well, Gruel and uh, Colin Chin at center uh, are used to each other, and I'm sure Sean Williams, who plays uh, uh, for us in Indianapolis, is uh, happy to play okay, with some quality set. defense for right players there. like that. Right there. You see that spot that I just kicked into the ice? Here we go. And Dan O'Halloran drops the puck. We're underway. And the West Division starts with control. Makash of Phoenix, number four, dumps it in. Sean Williams of the Indianapolis Ice, number nine in red. Trying to beat the four-checking of the West. But Makash with a nice drop pass. Out of the point. McLeod's shot. Knocked into the corner. But the West maintains possession. Here's McLeod. Out of the far corner, number four is again McCosh. Here to the near side, and Emmons, number 15, behind the net. And at this point in time, the East All-Stars just trying to get possession of the puck. The West, John Marks, good for checking, has them all tied up. Well, right now, the uh, West is looking fairly good. The East isn't uh, taking, out the, taking anybody out. Right, there's a little tentative. Everybody's playing a little soft. Uh, uh, they got to heat it up a little bit. I would expect that if the East continues to have this kind of trouble that you will see body on body here shortly. Now Gruel's drop pass connects with Deneen. Back to Gruel, the veteran. Now Deneen, his centering pass knocked behind the cage. And there it's picked up by Brian McKee, number seven. Intercepted by the East All-Stars in red. And Colin Chin, number 26, plays for Fort Wayne. He was born and raised in Fort Wayne. Playing for his hometown Comets. Loses the puck. The West carries in. And the East able to take it away. And here's Jock Callender. What a great story he is out of Muskegon in the Pittsburgh organization. Come back the other way with McKee, number seven. A long slap shot, and it's handled by O'Neill. And up over the glass into the crowd as McKee got all of that one. He's out of Peoria, Illinois. 11 goals this season so far. Well, I said the first shift looked a little tentative. Can uh, people are just kind of nudging up against each other. It's like, boy, we don't want to hurt anybody out here. The second uh, we had a change on the fly, somebody came out, McC Calendar McCulloch approached the blue line, boom, a hit. Maybe that'll lead to a little bit more. Well, as you mentioned at the top of the telecast, this is a game that provides an opportunity for these young players to be seen by the scouts. And I would think that they don't want to show themselves as tentative hockey players. They want to show themselves as aggressive, talented hockey players. Now, 
Here's one, Mike Stapleton, his dad, Pat Stapleton, a great for the Chicago Blackhawks for many years. Mike wearing number 21 in red in this hockey game. Now McKaylick right in front, a shot, and he hangs on. That was Stapleton with a near miss right there as McKaylick fed him the puck in the slot. Well, Mike is feeding off of Mike is feeding off of McKaylick and Callender. Callender knows where McKaylick's going to be all the time. They played together so long. Uh, Dave centers it out front to where Stapleton should be in the slot. He just didn't get much wood on it. Clarity picked it clean. And now the West All-Stars coming out of their own end. Happy can't hang on to it. Battle for it along the far board. And here comes the East team. Here's Stapleton behind the defense. The booming shot, he scores! You can give him one chance, but you can you're not going to give Mike Stapleton two chances too often. A big shot. And Flaherty just missed it. A long shot. He had a clean look at it, John. He just missed it. Stapleton drove it home for the first score of the hockey game. Dave McKaylick feeds uh, Mike Stapleton flying down the right side, and Mike picked it up on the fly. Good momentum. Uh, got all of that shot, there's no question, and, and uh, went through the five hole. Clarity was a little late getting down on it, but a uh, big start for the East. Another look at the blistering shot by Stapleton, and he scores. One to nothing, the East leading the West. We played almost three minutes here at the Omni in Atlanta. West from behind their own net. Number five is Rene Chapdelaine from Phoenix, a late addition to the All-Star roster, following injuries to a couple of Phoenix players that, that cost them their All-Star appearance. Oh, nice play behind the net. Robbie Nichols trying to center it, but it's taken away. Here comes the East. Across the line, 17 is Malte. Couldn't make the play. We come back the other way, two on two. Nichols trying to dump it in, and it's taken away by Deneen. Across the line to Steve Gottis. He drops it for Messier. Right in front, Gottis couldn't get a stick on it. And the West comes back as we have it up and down the rink. Nichols pass, too far for everybody. And Messier leads it cross ice for Murphy. Big Rob Murphy out of Milwaukee. Number 18 loses the puck. The West All-Stars feed it ahead. Number eight is Whitney, the youngster out of San Diego. Whitney with a little room. Whitney with a move, and he lost the puck. Whitney. Look at this little guy dance. I said he was quick, Ken, and, and uh, exciting, and walked right, right down the middle and, and just failed to get a shot away, but a heck of a play. 14 is Eric Murano. A shot, a save, a near miss there for Andrew McBain. The right winger out of Milwaukee had the shot, but what a fine save by Flaherty. Now McBain. McBain just missed the far post. Andrew McBain has seen a lot of action in the NHL, brings a lot of talent to the eye. A near miss on a couple of opportunities, and here come the West All-Stars trailing one to nothing. We've played almost five minutes of the first period of the IHL All-Star game. Sean Williams beats Colin Chin, number 26. Chin just missed the far post. And now a three on two developing. But now we have a change of lines for the West. Dave Mackey, number 16, dropped in the corner, no call. And the red clad East All-Stars head up the rink at an offside. His whistle, Sean Williams, was across the blue line before the puck. And that's an offside. We're going to take a break. We'll have more from the Omni after this. So I'm doing my sound check. Hello, hello, hello. And I hear this woman's voice. Watch that last chord. I'll show you. She grabbed the guitar. And then she started rocking. No, I mean rocking. You're pretty good. Serves something this cold. Suddenly, I remember this was a butt spot. I like your style. Welcome back, everybody, to the Omni. It's a very exciting hockey game, and a gentleman, I'm sure, thrilled about all of this, the president of the new Atlanta Knights, Richard Adler. Uh, exciting here in Atlanta. 
It's a hot time, you know, combine this with the Super Show, which is the largest uh, sporting goods show in the world here this weekend. Uh, it makes for a lot of fun and a lot of festivities. Fireworks opening up the game. It's a good prelude for uh, people to see what we're going to see next year. Congratulations on your Atlanta Knights franchise. All right, thank you very much. Richard Adler, the president of the new Atlanta Knights, and we'll get back to the play-by-play. -play. We're back upstairs. John Happy written off the play for the West. They center it all the way through, and Gruel comes away with it. Number 24 in red for the East All-Star. He tips it ahead. The West able to take over. Trailing one to nothing. 14-20 remaining in the first period of play. And now Gruel with a two on two. To Colin Chin. Chin right through the crease, almost forced it home. And the West coming the other way. It's dumped in and deflected to the corner. is Brad Berry and there's a pass offside as one of the things you see in all-star games John because the teams really don't have the opportunity to practice the passing doesn't click perhaps as smoothly as it might with teams that have worked together for months well you'll see that uh, with uh, lines that uh, have players three players uh, that are playing on three different teams but, but but you have a line here from Muskegee or from Kalamazoo that's played together all year uh, Gruel and Chin played together a lot these guys are working together pretty well um, uh, th these passes are right there Chin has a good play to the net these these two guys are going to work together well as, as, as to see if Williams can feed off of those two now the West carries to center Across the line, number four, McCock. Oh, the rebound opportunity was there. Nichols on a near miss, and the East comes the other way. Here's Jock Callender. Callender across the line, leaves it for Stapleton. He fires, he's already scored one, but a pad save that time by Flaherty. And the West carries up the rink, number five, Rene Chapdelaine. Across the line, trying to roll it in front, just missing on the connection with McCosh, his Phoenix teammate. And the puck comes all the way down to the west end. And Chapdelaine reloads. Leaving it for the cloud. Getting around the check on the far side. Tuttle. Uh, Peoria dumps it in. But now the east comes the other way. Right back in the attack zone. McKaylick. Now Stapleton. Stapleton on a fake. Oh, and a nice save by Flaherty. As Stapleton went to the bag of tricks maybe once too often. Flaherty dragging that skate behind made a nice save. Now Gord Deneen. And across the line and offside is called. Gord Deneen, an interesting story. Number six for the Red Clad East All Stars from a famous hockey playing family, John. Well, his father's now coaching in uh, uh, Philadelphia, and I think his brother uh, was uh, traded, what, from Hartford uh, to Philly. So dad gets to coach son, I guess, at an, uh, an older age. Uh, getting on here, uh, Ken. You've seen the line of uh, McKaylick and Callender and Stapleton. They've had two shifts. They've had four <laughs> quality chances, and I mean quality chances, and have scored one goal. This line could have a big night. Right now, they have accounted for the goal. Stapleton made it one to nothing. Now Messier and a stick save there by Flaherty. There's one just wide of the far post. It goes to the far point. Jean-Marc Richard from Fort Wayne, number seven, keeps it alive. It comes here to the near side. And now it's the West All-Stars having trouble getting out of their own way. Kept alive in front. Messier, the rebound, and a glove save as Goddess. On a near miss, Steve Goddess, number 11, could not get it by Wade Flaherty. And Goddess came close on that one. Goddess, an outstanding youngster, 22 goals so far for Kalamazoo. We just played Kalamazoo Friday, Saturday, and this line, of course, plays together all the time. They, they, they talk out there. They know where each other is going to be. A nice little play by Messier to Goddess. He just didn't get quite enough wood on it either. Otherwise, he might have scored because that happened about four or five feet right in front of Florida. Messier, Goddess, and Malte, all from Kansas, or uh, all from Kalamazoo out there right now, and a quick snapshot from the slot, and Flaherty takes it up on the chest as Malte did everything but get that one in the net, and as you said, John, a well-manufactured play there. Well, I said there's some continuity there. Right now, the East uh, is moving the puck a little more efficiently. They, they are jumping a little bit more than the, the West team is. That's why you're seeing a big discrepancy in shots at this time. 
there you see clarity with that fine save as we return to action. The West All Stars dump it in. Goddess bangs it ahead too far. And it's sent back into the zone. And Deneen throws it back out. It's tracked down there by number three, Kevin Wartman from Salt Lake. Now it's tipped across the line. Alan Heppel leaves it for Todd Harkins, number 28. He's tied up in the corner, and there's one deflected over the glass. A souvenir for the fans. And we've got 11-18 remaining in the first period. It's one to nothing to East, and coverage of tonight's IHL All-Star Game will continue right after this local message. It's Toyota's truckload sale, the first shipment of the new year. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And the Toyotas are coming in just the way you want them. Yeah. Rolling, rolling, rolling. There's a truckload of savings on Tercel, the lowest price sedan in America. And Corolla, with option package savings and factory to dealer incentives, you could save up to $1,800. Get the deal you want, along with no money down, but time's limited, so you better hurry. It's Toyota's truckload sale, and they're moving fast. There you see East coach Al Sims. At this point, quiet, although I would anticipate as strategy gets discussed as this game goes on, we'll have an opportunity to eavesdrop. Linesman Jay Jacobs drops the puck. Deep in the East zone. McBain sends it ahead too far for Rob Murphy, number 18. Their teammates in Milwaukee. West sends it all the way down. No icing here. And it's played by the East All-Star. Jeff Circa, number three, from the Indianapolis Ice dumps it in. See his first shift. And it comes here to the point. Phil Von Stefanelli of Milwaukee throws it behind the cage. And McCosh can't clear the zone. Oh, McBain has his pocket picked. But it comes to Murphy across the line. Back for Murphy to the far side. McBain shot. Nice save by Flaherty. The rebound. Another save by Flaherty. And finally, the West bangs it off the board all the way down. This indeed will be an icing call when the puck is thrown from icing. the defensive side of the red line all the way across the goal line. That's icing. And we'll go down and have a face off down to our right. There you see Andrew McBain, the right winger from Milwaukee. 16 goals, 50 points. And McBain has spent part of eight years in the NHL. Well, Jeff Circa broke the playoff right at the red line and quickly fired it up, up ice. And uh, the line from uh, Milwaukee passed it a couple of times. I think that the, the uh, puck may have gone off the post, so another good scoring chance for the East. Now the East wins the draw. Behind the net. Nelson all tied up, battling for it. Comes here to the near side. Good job by Barry to keep it alive. But it comes to number 21 in white, Dominic Lebois. He can't get it past Gruel. Finally, they clear the zone. And the West able to come away with it. Here comes Whitney. He fires it wide. Hard to believe Whitney's just 19 years old. And can he fly up and down the rink? There he is behind the net in white. Getting the rough ride down there by Brad Barry. Played along the boards. Gruel able to clear it, and Lavoie plays it back at his own line. One to nothing. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first period. The East leading the West in the International Hockey League All-Star Game. Here's Whitney. Puts on the brakes behind the net. From a bad angle, it's right in the crease. Lavoie from the point. He's got the booming shot and a big save by O'Neill. Here's Colin Chin with Gruel. Gruel cutting in, trying to roll it back toward Chin. He got on the backhand, couldn't make the play. Now Whitney avoiding checks. It's dumped in on the diagonal. Played off the glass. Chin gets there first. Across the line for Jean-Marc Richard, right through the goal mouth and deflected into the seats. A souvenir, nice catch down there. Well, the West finally got something uh, to uh, maybe get excited about in their, their last uh, shift in the uh, East uh, defensive zone. Puck comes right down the middle. 
comes right down the middle. Uh, Dominic Lavoy steps into it, one times it, and a big save by the East goaltender. Uh, that's really only the, uh, the, the, the that's probably the toughest save he's had to make tonight. You see how the bodies go flying through the goal crease. And as we come back to live action, the West comes across the line. Nice drop pass over there for Alan Heppel. Deflected to the far side and now played by Dave McKayla. Here's the veteran, 29 years old. Across the line with Stapleton. Now the drop pass, nobody home. Sean Happy trying to make a play. His centering pass taken away by Callender. Jock Callender had a major knee operation a year ago, and many thought his hockey career was over. But he determined no, he still wanted to play. And after rehabilitation all summer long, comes back when everybody else figured he was finished. There he is, number 15 in red, waiting, waiting. Makes his move and has his pocket picked, but the puck is back into the zone. Now McKaylick for Callender, his shot deflected behind the cage. McKaylick keeps it alive, but it's picked up there by number four, McCosh. And the West clears to center. Jeff Serka feeds it right back, but is knocked down by the West. Right in front! And they just missed. Jeff Medill was set up beautifully. Couldn't make the connection for the tying goal. Now Stapleton just rolls it ahead. The East All-Stars change on the fly. Makash feeds it into the corner. Emmons trying to make the play. Taken away by the East All-Stars. And up the far side they come. Now the West intercepts. Emmons can't make a play as he falls down. We've had a penalty-free first period. Malte can't control. Goddess almost took it away. Jeff Delane able to clear the zone. But now Barry being chased down there by Mackey. Played along the far side by Whitney. Number 12 is Rob Nichols trying to find Whitney. He's all tied up for a backhander save. Rebound a goal! The West ties it up on a rebound shot pass. Mike O'Neill. It's one to one. Well, in the last couple of minutes, I said maybe they have something to get excited about. And uh, out of the corner from, uh, from Nichols, I think it's Whitney here, controls the puck very well. We, I said he can handle it. Nichols return, goes to the net, rebound. Thank you very much. Rob Nichols on the backhander. Here is what O'Neill was looking at as that puck eluded him on the rebound. He made the first save, which is his responsibility. Defense couldn't clear the puck. And Nichols now, here's a breakaway for Goddess. Goddess, nice drop pass and a near miss on that one. As Goddess can feel the pressure trying to get the puck to Messier. Now across the line, Goddess. Rolls it in front, a shot over the crossbar. Might have been high, but Clarity got the blocker on it. Now Messier. Right in front, Goddess couldn't get a shot away. There's another shot, a rebound, cleared into the corner. Steve Malte, number 17. Whitney couldn't take it away. Goddess back to Malte, but Whitney does intercept there. Now Whitney throws it ahead across the line from Mackey. Here to the near side. Number seven in the corner is McKee, and he scores! What appears for the moment to be a harmless play, and now the West leads the East two to one. Well, here's here's what we call coaches call players getting a little tunnel vision. Plays plays in the corner. Defensemen are looking at the puck carrier, and uh, man's all alone in front. Nice pass, nice pass to the to the front of the net. Bang, snapped in. Defensemen got to look behind them, beside them to see if anybody's free. Mac is all alone and didn't make any mistake. Mackey, a 20-goal scorer so far this year for Peoria. Originally drafted by Chicago in 84, puts the West on top 2-1. to one. They've scored two goals in about a minute here late in the first period. And now the East All-Stars trying to answer the bell here. Murphy doing a good job to keep it alive, but the West takes it away, and here they head up the rink. Happy across the line. 31 in the corner is Sean White. Along the boards, Deneen throws it ahead. 
Richard bangs it all the way down. Murphy trying to make a play. He takes it away. A backhander a save. The rebound steered wide. Alvon Stefanelli throws it ahead. Taken away by the West team. Apples pass. Knocked right back to him. Now the East All-Stars able to play it. Here's Andrew McBain, number eight. Throws it right in front. And a near miss again. The West heads back the other way. McCosh leads it across the line. Oh, a nice sweep check there as Jeff Medill was headed in on goal. It was a good read by Jeff Circuit. Backed up his partner, cut the ice in half, and was able to poke check the West player coming down the middle. Nice read by Jeff Circuit. The West controlling, leading in the hockey game 2-1. to one. 3.50 to go in this first period of play. These guys are going to get tired, John. We haven't had very many whistles here. This has been up and down and up and down. Well, not they, many offsides. They not moved many the puck ices. very well. They moved the puck well, and, and uh, uh, they're skilled people, as I said. They have hockey sense, and, and uh, it's showing right now. Gruel shot is deflected up over the glass, and with 3.32 to go, it's 2-1, to one, the West leading in the Omni. Most guys kick back on the weekends. Jack, on the other hand. Good. So, how do you feel? Great rock and roll. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Tomorrow, we're sleeping in. Nothing beats the excitement of IHL hockey, and when enjoying the game, nothing beats the king of beers. So clean, crisp, and cold, nothing beats a bud. With Mike Barrick and John Marks, and a number of ladies enjoying the IHL All-Star game, this is Ken Double back at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, where the West leads the East 2-1 to one, with three and a half minutes remaining in the first period. Now off the draw. Kind of a soft pass to the near point, intercepted by the West. They broke up what could have been a strong potential scoring opportunity right off the faceoff. And yeah, when defensemen rotated from, from uh, one side to the other, you know, you're talking a 30, 40 foot pass. You've got to put something on it. That one could have resulted in a breakaway. Now a pass just too far for Whitney. Wouldn't mind seeing him on a breakaway before the night's over, just to just to see what kind of a move he put on the goaltender. I wouldn't mind seeing him on the internet, Indianapolis Ice Team. <laughs> <laughs> now they dump it all the way down. We'll have an icing call here. No, it's washed out as the goaltender plays it here to the near side. Cross ice it goes for Tuttle. He loses it. Whitney is there for the white-clad West All-Stars. zone and left for number seven Jean-Marc Richard an outstanding rushing defenseman for the Fort Wayne Commons 27 Dave McKyler around the net centering pass nobody home here comes the West a little too far for Whitney Gord Deneen back plays it first but Whitney gets a stick on it picked up there by Robbie Nichols he throws it in front to save a bouncing puck would come the other way. Here's Gruel across the line. Callender. Deneen. And right in front is McKaylick looking for a rebound or a deflection. No opportunity on the high shot. We come the other way across the line. It's Todd Harkin. Along the board, taken away by the East. Here comes Mike Stapleton. Also nicknamed Whitey, just like his dad, the Collender. Collender. Trying to keep it alive in the slot. And the West takes it away. With a little room around the defense and a booming shot by Harkins. And the glove saved by O'Neill, and he hangs on. We're coming back for more hockey at the Omni. It's 2-1 to one with 129 remaining. Coverage of tonight's IHL All-Star Game will continue right after this local message. Proud and 
the great things about hockey is the constant anticipation of a goal, John. You never know when the thing will go in the net. Actually, I thought that uh, this young man could have walked in a little bit further, looked like he had a little more room, but decided to uh, heat it up, which he did. Got it a little high. And here we have what the goaltender's looking at. A guy about 200 pounds coming down is going to shoot something at you at about 90 miles an hour, and you've got to get in the road of it. <laughs> and he does. Hits it up in the chest, juggles it, catches it, takes a whistle. That was Harkins who got all of that one. Can you imagine what he getting a road of something coming at you 90 <laughs> miles an hour? <laughs> I want to get out of the road of those things. No fooling. Now in front, taken away by Bill Von Stefanelli, banged all the way down. Of course, you played with a guy who shot at about 120 miles an hour named Bobby Hull. <laughs> well, and I didn't get in the road of it, let me tell you that. So <laughs> you were just, happy he was on I your team. I stood in awe. No, I just didn't watch. <laughs> now the East All-Stars throw it ahead. One minute, to play in the period. One minute left in this opening period. We have all kinds of interesting features during our intermission, including a wonderful piece on the history of the International Hockey League. It's been around a long time and developed some great, great names in hockey. Mike Barrick will have that for you as the West takes it away. Harkins fires it wide. It's played along the far board for Callender. Deflected into the zone for Stapleton. Stapleton centering pass. McKaylick was taken down. No call. And we'll set it up again with 24 seconds left. The East carries in. Here's Stapleton again. He throws a weak shot on net. Stapleton in the corner for McKaylick. Right in front for Collender. Now Barry fired it wide with 10 seconds left. Now the West comes out of the zone. One long shot remaining. It's wide, and that's the end of the first period of play. The West leads the East in a game which saw the West dominate early. The East got the first goal and then had a lot of opportunities, John. Then the West comes back with two to take the lead. Well, I said the first shift, it looked to me like the, the, the East came out a the, the little soft, a little tentative. They spent that shift uh, in their uh, end, and uh, but, but they played well defensively. They really didn't give up anything. I said that they're going to have to pick it up. The next lineup picked it up. Uh, I think it was Stapleton and, and uh, Callender, and McCulloch came out, had an excellent shift, followed another good shift. And the game certainly picked up its pace. Al Sims will talk to his players about getting back in the hockey game. At the end of the first period of tonight's IHL All-Star game, it's 2-1. to one. The West leads the East, and we'll be right back after these local messages. Told Sinner and Scotty, way to get us going that first shift. Bork shifting, moving right in, the shot scores! Now you can learn superstar hockey skill. Hockey with Roger Nielsen from Atlanta's video. Roger Nielsen has brought together Dennis Savard, Mike Gartner, Ron Francis, Greg Milne, Doug Wilson, and Ray Bork to improve your game. You'll learn the fundamentals of puck handling and control, the art of deking, passing and receiving like the pros, superstar shooting skill. There's even a detailed section on breakouts and set plays that create breakaway opportunity. Hockey with Roger Nielsen with freeze frame and slow-mo replay, plus spectacular highlights of the stars in action and especially priced at just $19.99. Call toll-free 1-800-533-1400 or send check or money order for $19.99 for each video plus $4 shipping and handling to P.O. Box 8207, Atlanta, Georgia. Got him right where we want him, guys. Good job. With Mike Barrick and John Marks, Ken Double back with you at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, where we have a two to one hockey game. The West All-Stars leading the East All-Stars after the first 20 minutes of play. And John, a little bit tentative overall in the play. I would think we might see the pace pick up a little bit in the second period. Well, it certainly did after the first shift. I, I thought the uh, East uh, second uh, unit that came out on the ice got something going for the East. And uh, Mikhaila Callender and uh, Mike Stapleton uh, provided an early lead uh, for the Eastern Division. Uh, then a couple other shifts 
fifths in a row same thing uh, the East were getting some good quality chances and good scoring opportunities it wasn't for Flaherty actually they could have three or four goals and O'Neill also pretty sharp in net on the other end of the rink and uh, a little bit later on we'll have the other goaltenders they'll come in at about the 30 minute mark halfway through this hockey game but right now Flaherty and O'Neill doing a pretty good job between the pipes no question you, you, you see in this game and I was trying to keep track of uh, I know we've got someone keep track of the shots on goal I was keeping track of uh, some quality chances and in that period I have the East Division with nine quality chances and the West with five the West is winning two to one so Flaherty has played very very well and as we say you never know when the puck is going to go on the net and again as all-star games go at this point in time with each team having at least one complete line to work together there is at least some continuity during the course of the period exactly uh, the line out of Kalamazoo uh, with uh, Maltes and Goddess and Messier uh, each uh, time they've been on the ice uh, I've had a, a good shift and had a good scoring opportunity uh, you saw Murphy McBain and Murano they've played together quite a bit in Milwaukee I talked about Chin and Grill they see a lot of each other Calendar and McCulloch see a lot of each other so these people uh, do provide a lot of continuity for maybe an extra person like Stapleton or a Sean Williams uh, to uh, uh, complete the lines but anytime you have three people play together for quite a while you're going to see some people move the puck speaking of Dave McKaylick the great veteran out of Muskegon he has had six consecutive 100 point seasons in play in the International Hockey League he's shooting for his seventh we've had an opportunity to talk with Dave McKaylick and get his reactions about his season the all-star game and more well I think earlier in my career it bothered me a bit uh, with the success success we had earlier in the career I think at times I, I thought I could have played up there or should have played up there, but at this point in my career, it's something that I've learned to accept. I enjoy playing hockey, and if I didn't enjoy playing hockey, I wouldn't be doing it right now. It's, uh, it's enjoyable, it's fun, it's a job, and uh, I enjoy doing it, and I'll do it you know, as long as I can, as long as somebody wants me to play for them. In your opinion, Dave, what has kept you out of the National Hockey League? Well, you've heard a lot of knocks. There's always my skating. That's the first thing that comes up. There's always my size that comes up second, and... Uh, that's, you know, that's just the way it goes, and, uh, you know, it's not something, it's something that I have accepted. I just probably wasn't good enough to play in the NHL, and that, that happens to a lot of players. I mean, there's only a certain few that are able to go up there and play well and do well in the NHL, and I haven't been able to do that, and that's fine. I've accepted it, and I've enjoyed my career in the minors, and hopefully I can have continued success. That's Dave McKaylick. Uh pre-taped earlier talking about his career in the eye and work in the uh, NHL Mike Stapleton scored first to put the East on top and then it was Robbie Nichols and Dave Mackey back to back to put the West on top as we go back to the locker room with our camera Get inside bar, Al okay. Sims the East coach talking to his players all over them here you see the ice gets bad here boys after about the 10 minute mark start shooting everything it's tough to make passes and handle the puck here uh, last five minutes of the period, so just keep putting the puck on him here, boys. Give him a lot of rebounds here off his chest, shoulder, everything's falling in front of him. Other guys drive for the rebounds here, boys. But well, that was a great period, guys. What a work out there. Boys, boys, come on up. Running out of clean shoes. And we'll be coming back with more of our first intermission and more of the IHL All-Star Game from the Omni in Atlanta. But first, we'll take this time out. The West leading the East 2-1 to one after the first 20 minutes of play. A proud sponsor of tonight's game is Olive Garden Italian Restaurant. The RCA projection screen is so big, you'll feel like part of the show when you watch the RCA home theater. It also has Dolby surround sound that's so real, Stand back, everyone. you'll forget you're sitting at home. Let me handle this. The RCA Home Theater also has Picks in Picks. It lets you watch two things at once, in color. Another way RCA is changing entertainment again. Dear Dave, you know what I do all day? Drive to basketball practice, piano lessons, and ballet. And that's just Monday. So we love your super value menu. We stop when we get a minute for Biggie Fries, a Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe, and Caesar Side Salad. And I know beforehand what it costs because everything's 99 cents each. Dave, please keep Wendy's super value menu because soon you'll have another customer, your friend Lori. Dear Lori, thanks. If you haven't thought of names, Dave's a nice one. Some auto dealers rely on balloons and other gimmicks to sell their cars. But the Cadillac dealers of the South have an altogether different style. 
Cadillac style. That's why we invite you to come in and see our cars that come standard with everything from anti-lock brakes and rugged safety cages to the only balloon you'll ever get with a Cadillac. The standard driver's side airbag. Cadillac style. It's not just in the cars, it's in the people who sell them. A full season of checking, slap shooting, and goal scoring comes to the Omni this year. Don't miss out on the inaugural season of the Atlanta Knights as they face off in the head-to-head, hard-hitting, hot hockey action of the International Hockey League. Get ready to light up the Knights. Season tickets on sale now. Call 525-8900. 525-8900. It's night time. Welcome back, everyone. This is Mike Barrick, and what an all-star game we have. The 2-1 to one score and a very interesting and offensive game here in the first period of play. Glad you've joined us here tonight. Boy, the International Hockey League, a tremendous tradition. 1945-46, the first year of the IHL. There have been some rough moments. There have been some exciting moments, and we'll take a look back at some of the interesting uh, sidelights of the history of the International Hockey League. It was a different style of fighting then than it is now. Um, what, what happened more than not, what two individuals would meet at center ice, and it was kind of a gunslinger effect, rather than uh, you know a big scrum in the front of the net and a fight breaking out, they would almost call each other out and stand at center ice and go blow for blow. And there was a lot of pride involved in who was the toughest of the league and who was, who was uh, going to be the next toughest. The IHL has always been colorful and competitive. The league was founded in 1945 and developed in the 1950s and early 1960s as a league where players drove to games and had other fuller part-time jobs. Located primarily in the Midwest, the league's reputation grew as a tough physical loop in such cities as Dayton, Columbus, and Toledo. And some consider the IHL as the Siberia of professional hockey. Although few consider the IHL as a developmental ground for the National Hockey League, the IHL has had some tremendous big-name and talented players, such as longtime Montreal Canadian John Ferguson, New York Islander goaltender Glenn Resch, and Olympic hero Mike Garuzioni. The longest-running IHL team are the Fort Wayne Comets, celebrating their 40th season in 1991-92. Broadcaster Bob Chase has called Fort Wayne Comet games for 39 years. The Cincinnati Mohawks are one of the most awesome minor league hockey teams ever put together. Roly McClanahan was their coach. Charlie Hodge was one of their goaltenders. They came up with some of the great hockey players of later years. They went one season and in a 60 game year, 150, tied two and lost eight. The great moments continue in the modern International Hockey League. Some of these have come from All-Star games, such as the last contest in 1984 in Kalamazoo, Michigan. The All-Stars gained a 6-4 win against U.S. Olympians and future NHL players Pat LaFontaine, Ally Afredi, and Chris Chelios. During the past five seasons, the IHL has suddenly transformed itself from a Midwest bus league to one which features major league buildings spanning all the way to the West Coast with direct affiliation to the National Hockey League as a prime training ground. So we have in Salt Lake have been very pleased with that growth uh, because as, as those who follow the IHL know, it was a lot of years it was Salt Lake and the Midwest teams. And so uh, the addition of the San Diego's, the Phoenixes, the Kansas Cities, and now Atlanta into the West is uh, extremely beneficial to this franchise. As the IHL truly becomes national in scope, the annual battle for the Turner Cup takes its place as one of hockey's premier events. Hope you enjoyed the piece and the history of the International Hockey League. Uh, boy, this league has really gone a long way. Uh, the Peoria Rivermen last year won 18 consecutive games, a pro hockey record, and there are some tremendous buildings in this league, the Delta Center in Salt Lake City and the beautiful Bradley Center in Milwaukee. A gentleman that uh, led his team to the Stanley Cup Championship. His uh, minor league clubs in Muskegon have been very successful over the years. The Muskegon Lumberjacks, Craig Patrick, uh, general manager of the Pittsburgh Penguins alongside. And uh, what an event we have here in Atlanta. Yeah, it's great to see hockey back in Atlanta. I remember coming here years ago, and it's just nice to, nice to see some excitement in the building full and uh, people enjoying hockey again. Tell us a little bit about the International Hockey League. The Penguins have a direct farm team with the Muskegon Michigan Club. Uh, tell us a little bit about the quality of play. 
Well, it's a top development league for uh, National Hockey League clubs. We've been able to bring people like uh, John Cullen and Mark Recchi and Phil Bork out of the International League. So now we're seeing, tonight we're seeing the best of the, America, the IHL has to offer. And there's some real quality players out there who someday will be playing in the National Hockey League. Boy, uh, Jack Canader and Dave McKaylick, uh, two players on the ice that have been just terrific uh, year in and year out. Uh, some time with the Pittsburgh Penguins, Jack Canader playing with uh, Mario Lemieux, but uh, they've really put on uh, some big numbers over the years in Muskegon. Well, they certainly have. They're very skilled players, both Dave and uh, Jack, and, and they've had some time in the National Hockey League, but they're very, very skilled players, and we, we actually are fortunate to have five players here tonight, so we're uh, excited about seeing them play in this level of hockey. We talked about the quality of play in the International Hockey League growing in leaps and bounds. Atlanta in uh, this upcoming season, uh, Phoenix and San Diego and Salt Lake City and Kansas City. Uh, what do you think about the progression of the teams uh, that have joined the IHL? Well, I think it's great. We're spreading throughout uh, the U.S. now. It uh, was used to be basically in the, in the Midwest, the Michigan and uh, in Indiana area, but now it's spreading throughout the um, well, into California and Arizona and now Georgia. So I think it's just terrific the way the league is expanding and, and in, involving all of the United States. Do you, do you see a further progression uh, in the International Hockey League? Maybe some more big city clubs, of course, here in the Omni in Atlanta and uh, other clubs uh, throughout the United States? Well, I think there's a great possibility that there will be further expansion. We have three or four uh, leagues that are development leagues now for the National Hockey League, and, and they're they've got their tentacles into all parts of the United States, so I can see further development happening. Direct affiliations to the National Hockey League seems to be the key in the IHL. Uh, seven clubs, number one affiliates of the National Hockey League. Yes, we're uh, the, the National Hockey League has their major affiliates in the IHL and the American Hockey League, and, and it's, it's great development grounds for, for our clubs. Craig, uh, we have a terrific game here tonight, 2-1. Uh, to one. Uh, In the NHL All-Star game, they say there's no hitting. We've seen a few uh, hits here in the first period. Well, they're playing with a lot more intensity than I, than I expected to see. I think they realize it's a showcase for them because there's further expansion in the National Hockey League, and all of them realize there's NHL personnel here watching them. So they're, they're looking for an opportunity to move upwards in the, in the near future. Craig, thank you very much. Best of luck to you and the Penguins, and best of luck to your Muskegon Lumberjacks team. Thank you very much. Craig Patrick, general manager of the Pittsburgh Penguins, my guest, and we'll go upstairs to Ken Double and John Marks. Thanks very much, Mike. We've got a 2-1 to one hockey game here after our first 20 minutes, and the second period is coming up. We hope you'll stay with us as we get ready to start period number two of tonight's IHL All-Star Game coming up right after these local messages. Hi. Jim here to let you know that we won't be using any uh, kittens or little puppies to try to sell your car you may not want in the first place. Instead, take a look at this Subaru Legacy. It's got all-wheel drive, AC, nice glass windows. Razzmatazz or just what you got? John Marks. John. John, yeah. Does it sound all right? Okay. A little more humph? Okay, you got it. <laughs> Are we looking at any graphics in particular on the scoring summary? There we go. 30 on Sports Up. Charlotte, Milwaukee. The Hornets have been struggling, but they may be in for a mugging if they don't protect the ball from the NBA's most prominent thief, the Bucks' Alvin Robertson. Charlotte versus Milwaukee, live Thursday, February 13th on Sports Up. Idyllic, serene Virginia. Forget that. There'll be no peace when these boys battle in an interesting feud of mountainous proportions. Virginia versus Virginia Tech, live Wednesday night at 7.30 on Sports Up. The players are just coming back out of the ice as we get set for second period action at the All-Star Game. Before we do that, let's take a look at some of the highlights of the first period and the first score. Mike Stapleton for the East put them up one to nothing. It's good calendar to McKaylick. McKaylick hits uh, Mike right in stride, and uh, he gets the big shot away. He can shoot the puck very, very well. And uh, I think it went five hole between the goalie's legs. Big goal. 
Uh, here's a play. Rob Nichols controls the puck, looks for a man in the slot. I believe it's Whitney. He uses his body, protects the puck extremely well. Uh, shot, rebound. Nobody picks Nichols up, and he puts the thing home. Big play right there in front of the goaltender. Our third goal. Again, it's a pass coming out of the corner. We mentioned this is Brian McKee. Fe feathers a puck between some legs, sticks, etc. Mackey left unattended on the other side of the net. Um, uh, makes uh, no hesitation, puts it in. The puck that was behind, uh, the puck behind Flaherty, incidentally, we're in the uh, lobby today. I saw him there. I didn't have a puck. If I had a head one, I was going to set it behind him because I wanted to see what it would look like with a goal, <laughs> with a puck sitting behind Flaherty. Well, I got to witness it. <laughs> he played very, very well. He had 15 shots, only one goal against. So it was a very big period uh, for Wade Flaherty. Now, there you see O'Neill. The uh, fact that the camera is not on his helmet right now, but like, when it was on his helmet, this is what he was looking at. Like I said, here he juggles that shot uh, from uh, uh, Harkins, I think, uh, coming down right right wing. <laughs> Someone taking a look. Um, I can shoot the puck. <laughs> Players like I a said, little hammy. Like they like right. that camera. Huh? It. Pretty soon it's going to be, hi, Mom, send money or something <laughs> like that. I'm in Atlanta. You know, I'm having some fun. But uh, like I said, guys shoot the puck 85, 90 miles an hour. You know, it's made of vulcanized rubber, and they even freeze it. So if it hits in the wrong spot, you know, where you haven't got a lot of protection, it can really hurt. So you got to give these goaltenders a lot of credit for staying hanging in there. Let's go down now to Mike Barrick. Mike Barrack here at uh, ice level. A uh, tremendous hockey game here tonight. The scheduled referee, Derek Martin, eight years as a professional referee or linesman of the IHL. You're out tonight. Yeah, it's unfortunate. On uh, January 3rd, I had a knee injury. I dislocated my knee, so I'm out for maybe another week. So let's get back in action on uh, the 4th of February. Exciting for Dan O'Halloran getting a chance. Uh, what's it like for a referee in a game like this? It's an excellent experience for anybody to be involved in the All-Star game, and I'm just happy to be here. And uh, all the officials on the ice are really looking for forward to the experience and enjoying themselves tonight. Not a lot of penalties. I don't think there were any in the first period. No, there's no penalties in the first period. The action was up and down. It was a good flow and it was exciting for the fans here in Atlanta. Derek Martin, IHL referee. Uh, we'll get back to the action. We've switched ends as now the East shooting down here to the left. And this period starts with a quick opportunity for the West. Thwarted there by O'Neill. Now the East coming right back. It's behind the cage. Right in front, backhander fired just wide by Malte. Now the puck comes along to the near side, popped up in the air. Jeff Circa jumping at it, trying to knock it back into the zone, couldn't. But now Mitch Messier throws it ahead. Across for teammate Steve Goddess, right in front for Messier. And he lost the puck. Good play by Sean McCosh, number four, to break it up. But now Goddess keeps it alive. Descending pass off the side of the cage. McCosh. They throw it ahead. There's Medill number 20 across the line from Akash. He couldn't control a bouncing puck. And it's played up the far side. And now behind the cage. And all the way down the rink. We have an icing call here. And we'll have a chance to take a look at Kevin Constantine. There is the yeah. West coach from Kansas City. Great shift, boys. Great shift out there. What a work, Stevie. Mitch. Now, John, he that's was... A good, that's a good opening for uh, the East team. The line from Kalamazoo of Messier, Malte, and Goddess really controlled the play. Here we see Kevin Constantine, uh, the uh, head coach of the West. Uh, did he got find you good. or did you find him <laughs> as far as bringing him into hockey in Kalamazoo? No, he was the uh, assistant, of course, brought in by Jack Farrar, who's the general manager of uh, San Jose now. Jack used to be the GM with the Minnesota North Stars, but... Uh, uh, we had a good uh, relationship, worked together for three years, and won a lot of hockey games. Uh, Kevin really knows his stuff. Now it's flipped right through the goal mouth, and Brad Perry couldn't get a stick on that shot. Here comes the West the other way, trying to beat the defense, but a good play. The East All-Stars clear to center. Across the line, number eight, McBain. McBain. Shot fired by Nelson. It's right back through the crease and now cleared by the West. Now Whitney trying to make a play, but he's got to get a new stick. Somebody probably stepped on it on him. He's, been, <laughs> he's had the puck all night. Figure, let's break the stick. He can't have it. 
can't make a big play when he has got well they, of course by rule by rules they have to drop the broken stick. Now it's played to the line and that of course is uh, for no other reason than injury. Now Sean Williams couldn't get the puck past the linesman. Frustrating play there as potential two on one was, uh, two on one was developing now white. Backhander flipped in front by Effie played over into the far corner. Now the shot steered wide. And now Colin Chin trying to come out of his own end gets hooked a little bit. Getting the sticks up a little bit John. Well, we might see a penalty call or power play situation pretty soon. A uh, couple of hooks there. Now Sean Williams trying to get around the defense. Good play to cut him off there by Heppel number 23. Now it's right in front of shot. Didn't get all of it. Now it's there for Williams there and he'll be called for the penalty. I said guys were hooking it had to have happen sooner or later. And the guilty party is number nine Sean Williams will have the call and more after this timeout. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. Clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. You can taste it, feel it, know you got it right, cause everything else is just a light. This portion of tonight's game is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. With Mike Barrick down at ringside and John Marks up here in the booth, this is Ken Double. We're in period number two as the fans are enjoying the IHL All-Star game. Now the East team shorthanded for two minutes. The penalty to Sean Williams of the Indianapolis Ice. Two minutes for a hook. And so the red clad East Division team trying to kill the penalty the first power play opportunity of the night and John it'll be interesting to see how the West attacks they attack the point and just able to keep it in the zone now Harkins his shot knocked down by the defense over to the far side number three is Kevin Wortman now Harkins trying to feed it to 31 Sean White he's got it and his pass is deflected and they couldn't keep it in I think in this situation it might be easier to kill a penalty than maybe score in a power play. I could could be wrong, but uh, you maybe have to work a little bit uh, longer together to make things work. Right now, uh, the what East is going is uh, very very well. Behind the net rule, as the East looks at a potential scoring opportunity, shorthanded Chin gets it back and then had it stripped on a good play by Wortman. Number 12 is Robbie Nichols, the veteran. Feeds it across the line, but Jeff Circa with a good interception. There's your defenseman making a good play. Although <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you did play a lot of defense in the National Hockey League before being moved up to left wing, huh? Yeah, I was a kind of a jack of all trades and a master of none. <laughs> <laughs> and now from the point, the booming shot by McLeod. Steered wide on a good play by O'Neill. Digging at it in the corner, trying to get a face off. Now it's turned loose. Von Stefanelli ahead to Collender. And he forgot the puck, but now rags a little time to Circa. His clearing pass didn't clear the zone. Now McKaylin cross ice, and Von Stefanelli finds a hole and sends it all the way down. He's back at full strength. Good job, Kelly. Really uh, only gave up one uh, one shot, shot from the point, and uh, the goaltender was able to see it. Now Mike Stapleton behind his own net. Tied up down there. Trying to dig the puck to center. Finally does. And now 29, Barry in red. Drop pass from McKayla. Barry behind the cage. Bouncing puck is cleared, but not out. Nelson keeps it alive. Gets it back, fires, knocked down in front. Mikhaila got a back header, he scores! We've talked about him all night. Dave Mikhaila ties up the game at two, the veteran from Muskegon, who had 23 goals coming into this game during the regular season. 
scores for the East squad. Here's a man that uh, scored uh, what, over 100 points for seven years in a row, and here's why. He's going to pick up a loose puck here. He shows a great amount of patience, takes a look, pulls it to his backhand, carves the goaltender wide open, and we say, like, set the table. Now he carved the turkey. Here, look at this patience. He's going to open him up between the legs. There's a guy that is used to scoring goals. Three times, Mikhailik was the IHL's top goal scorer, including 66 goals with Kalamazoo in 84-85. He knows how to put the puck in the net. And now here comes Steve Goddess from Kalamazoo. His backhand is triple wide. His centering pass knocked down, and the West is trying to get on track after they have seen this game get tied up. Good play there by Malte. He can't carry in, and the West All Stars head the other way. McKee dumps it in. And Gord Deneen, who, while with the New York Islanders, Got himself a Stanley Cup and championship ring. Couldn't play the puck. Now Whitney into the corner. Kept in at the point. Now a battle for it to the neutral zone. And Whitney tracks it down. The little guy is all over the ice. Good sweep check there by Jean-Marc Richard. And then when the puck is played back into the zone, it's offside. And we're going to take a break here. 13.09 left in the second period. We're tied at two. And coverage of tonight's IHL All-Star Game will continue right after this local message. A full season of checking, slap shooting, and goal scoring comes to the Omni this year. Don't miss out on the inaugural season of the Atlanta Knights as they face off in the head-to-head, hard-hitting, hot hockey action of the International Hockey League. Get ready to light up the Knights. Season tickets on sale now. Call 525-8900. 525-8900. It's nighttime. We're here at ice level, and a lot of hockey fans will remember the name Kurt Bennett. Kurt, you and a number of uh, former uh, Atlanta Flames are here tonight. Yeah, old old timers, old timers. We got uh, Tommy Lysak still here, Eric Vale, Willie Plett, uh, Boom Boom Jeffreyon, our old coach is still here, Randy Maneri, uh, uh, Greg Fox. There's a bunch that are here. They're still living in Love Atlanta. What do you think about the return of pro hockey here to Atlanta next season with the Atlanta Knights? Well, I mean, we're all excited about it. Uh, I know Dan Bouchard's still involved in hockey. This year, he's with the Quebec Nordiques, and he has to commute up to Quebec to get the hockey. So next year, you know, we really, what do you think? we never thought hockey should have left here. We love playing here. That's why we're living here still. And now that we have hockey here, we don't have to move again. We can stay here. Hockey will come to us. Kurt Bennett uh, alongside. Uh, we'll go up to Ken and John. That's the continuation of play-by-play. -play. And the puck is in the east zone, the west attacking. West trying to come out of their own end, and they finally do with the puck is happy. Comes here to the near side for White behind the net. We have an icing call coming up. And we'll head the other way for a faceoff with 12 and a half minutes to go in this second period. Deadlock to two. There's Phil Russell, another for, uh, former Chicago Blackhawk. An old buddy of mine. Yeah, we get together quite a bit. And of course, he's the head coach of the Muskegon Lumberjacks. and. Uh, we play each other quite often. Uh, he's a really a truly a good man. He's really a, a good friend and uh, uh, I'm happy for the success he's having right now. He's a great guy. He spent a little time here in Atlanta yeah, as a good professional heavy player. Too, but I got a He looks like he's got a little heavy. They might have bought that suit a couple of years ago. It's kind of stretching around the middle a little bit. No. You obviously bought your suits a little more recently. <laughs> yeah, these cause, fit. Because I am heavy right now. <laughs> well, it's the... Uh, it's, it's the natural option of former athletes, right? <laughs> Creatures of habit. We still <laughs> like to have something with foam on the top of it. <laughs> and you just don't work it off quite as often exactly. as, you do, as you used to. <laughs> uh, uh, the last couple of shifts, uh, Ken, uh, and getting back to the uh, interview with the general manager, Craig Patrick, the tempo of the game is picking up. I see some good intensity here. The speed of the game is picking up. I think some people decided, listen, fellas, let's really get to put on a show here. And I know each individual is sitting inside his jersey saying, gosh, this could be a big chance. It's a big chance. And I, they want to make the best of it. The game's got a good pace to it. Speaking of big, you had a look at number 18, Rob Murphy, 6'3", 205 pounder, just 22 years old, plays for Milwaukee. Number 18 as the puck goes to Von Stefanelli, and he ripped a quick one on net. 
And a quick glove of Wade Flaherty kept that one from finding the mesh. We're going to take a break. It's a two to two hockey game. Almost to the midway point of this contest. We're coming back to the Omni after this timeout. Stay with us. A full season of checking, slap shooting, and goal scoring comes to the Omni this year. Don't miss out on the inaugural season of the Atlanta Knights as they face off in the head-to-head, -head, hard hitting, hot hockey action of the International Hockey League. Get ready to light up the nights. Season tickets on sale now. Call 525-8900. 525-8900. It's nighttime. Assistant General Manager Al Coates is alongside from the Calgary Flames. And Al, some people here in Atlanta might not like you too much because the Flames moved from Atlanta to Calgary. I didn't take their team. Uh, this was always a fun place to, to uh, come and play here, you know, like it was such an exciting building and the people were so rambunctious here and full of energy that we love coming down here to play here. It'd be nice to see hockey here again. It's going to be nice to see hockey here again next year. You have three players in this All-Star uh, game here tonight, Kevin Workman, uh, Sean Hafey, and Todd Harkins. They're playing well. Uh, we almost had Jason Mazzotti here as well. Our goaltender has played so well for us in Salt Lake City. I, I just think it's a great opportunity for all these young players to play in such a extravaganza here with a lot of people in the building a big big building and uh, there's something that they're never going to forget and it's a pretty good hockey game al thank you very much my pleasure thank you. al coates assistant general manager of the calgary flames and uh, mcbain the other way fires one wide of the post a funny bounce off the board keeps it alive for eric murano number 14. right in front mcbain he scores there's a good show of strength and hand-eye coordination right there ken that was a hard pass in front, and he controlled it and hammered it. And I think he had to because Flaherty is right there. Let's take a look at this again. Out of the corner, who's this? Morano worked hard for this puck, gets it down to Murphy, and he fires this puck across. Look at McBain, he's just strength on stick, boom. He forces that puck past Flaherty. Look at this, second effort right there, bang, go hard, hand die, boom. He had to hit it again, I see. Flaherty actually made the first first save on it, and McBain stayed right with it, put it in. That was a good goal by all three people. McBain had 27 goals in 47 games with Milwaukee a year ago. His best year, 88-89, 37 goals, 40 assists, 77 points in 80 games. His ninth season of professional hockey overall, second with Milwaukee. But as we told you, parts of eight seasons in the National Hockey League, McBain, a good player. Now here's Sean Williams. He got behind the defense and fired one, but way out of the net. Flaherty able to make the save. We'll have a change of the goaltenders here in a moment or so. In a three to two hockey game, the East has regained the lead. A seesaw affair here in the Omni. We hope you're enjoying it. The best of the next generation headed to the NHL. As Gruel dumps it in and gives chase to the far side. Chapdelaine sweeps it into the corner and go, 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 go. digging, not going to have a face off. Chapdelaine trying to get the whistle. Behind us, hollering, hit him, hit him. <laughs> well, the referees want to keep it moving, you know. Now it's played to the far side, and finally with a little room, Gary Emmons. Number 15 in white heads up the rink. Emmons, better run out of Kansas City, dumps it in. Now the West changes on the fly. And here's Gruel. For the East, he hits Mikhailik on the far side. He's got Chin in front. Mikhailik just fanned on him. Now Gruel. For Mikhailik. For Gruel. For Chin. He fanned on it. Didn't get all of it. The rebound. Mikhailik couldn't get it home. What an opportunity there. Now Mikhailik leaves it behind the net. And McKee. He just floats it to center ice. Kind of get the pressure away, and now here they come the other way. 26 is Tuttle. Played here for Lavoie, too far for him in the corner. And the East All-Star is able to clear to center. Nine and a half minutes to go in the second period. Three to two, the East leading the West. The West in white, trying to tie it up here. But now it's played 
by Gordon E. McCulloch across the line. Puts on the brakes, looking for the play. And it's interrupted by Tuttle. Tuttle gets it back across the line, trying to split the defense. He swept off the play, and here's Circa. Circa not a big scorer, but he's had a couple of nice plays defensively as Callender's taken down. No penalty coming here. The West heads the other way. A long pass ahead and a chase for the puck. O'Neal out, plays it along the boards, but he almost got himself in trouble. And now Whitney keeps it alive. Whitney won't be 20 until May. Now across the line, Collander, a drop pass for Circa. The rebound, and he hangs on. I think Flaherty was just praying for a whistle, but he didn't really want it at his doorstep. <laughs> it was a nice passing play, drop pass from Callender to Circa, and, and Jeff is playing extremely well. Gets a good shot on that, little rebound. Flaherty covered it very well. He's going for a rest, folks. He said, I've had enough. I've seen a lot of rubber in a half a game. Have another look here. Here we have good passing play. People from the right side back over to the left side. Calendar gains the line. I'm sure there's communication. Here's Circa walking in. Quick snap. There's the rebound. There's another one. Finally he gets the coverage. I got a feel that Flaherty said, boy, that was a long night, a lot of rubber. Probably got more shots tonight in half a game than he's used to seeing in a game and a half with Kansas City. But he played very well despite giving up the three goals. Flaherty, 21 saves, 24 shots on goal. And O'Neill sits after having... 10 saves as you saw Arthur's Urbe back in the net for the West All-Star and Urbe an outstanding goaltender out of Riga Latvia and he gets put to the test and a score on the first shot is popped over Urbe as Mitch Messier makes it a 4-2 hockey game in favor of the East All-Stars as Urbe gets tested right away and the puck gets behind him for a score. I, I think Messier takes us out of the air. Here's Steve Goddess. Messier goes to the net off his skate, and then he taps, I think, the, off the skate. It might have jumped up, and I don't know if Mitch took it out of the air or took it off the skate and then just shot it in. But this is like, well, welcome to the game. See that new off the skate onto Urbe's stick. It just went up, and I think Mitch just tapped it out of the air, about three or four inches out of the air. And now at the other end, White on a near miss, as he's firing now at Rob Dobson. Puck thrown behind the cage. To the far side, it's played by Harkins. Harkins comes away with it. Harkins has got some room. He fires, and Dobson makes the save. So both these uh, goaltenders come right in the game, and they are tested immediately. With 7.48 to go in the second period, it's 4-2. to The East leads the West. Coverage of tonight's All-Star game will continue right after we take time out for this local message. The RCA 8mm camcorder is so small and light, you'll take it everywhere. That way you won't miss a thing. It also gives you great color in almost any light. Come on, give me the slippers. Like we say, you won't miss a darn thing. And when you go from one subject to the next, it focuses instantly. The RCA 8mm camcorder. Another way we're changing entertainment again. There you see Rob Dobson in the East goal from the Muskegon Lumberjacks. Six feet, 195 pounder, 24 years old. He's 9, 7, and 1. Two shutouts, an 89% save ratio for Muskegon. And boy, did he get the test right away, coach. Didn't take long. Herbe immediately. Dobson again. He, he, his first shot was a tough one. His second one now threw a screen from the point. Another tough one. He just got his glove down. Here we go. West wins the draw. Here's uh, defenseman McLeod. McLeod. A little bit of a screen, I think. It looks like he's got it by his elbow on the pad. If he wasn't warmed up, he is now. Here we go. Count the oh, goal. Oh, my goodness. He couldn't hang on to that one and Makash makes it a four to three hockey game. Just couldn't handle this shot from the blue line and Brad Berry, defenseman from Kalamazoo, almost gets this puck before it goes over the line. Three shots in about 15 seconds on Dobson. As that thing 
just trickles through, just lost the handle. He thought he had it, and McCosh poked at it. Bradbury, watch this. Bradbury, I think if you see, almost keeps this puck out of the net. He thinks he has it, doesn't have it. There it is. Oh, missed it by two or three inches. So now it's a four to three hockey game, and boy, the offensive intensity has really picked up as the West All Stars trailing four to two decide, hey, we got to get back in this well, hockey game. There's an important. Folks, just, there can be about 70 face-offs in a game, and if a third of those are in your own end and you don't win them, you saw what happened. We saw the West win two face-offs in a row. One he made a, a big save on. The other one he doesn't get to handle on results in a goal against. Face-offs are very important, especially in your own end of the ring. Now the puck played to the West blue line. They move it up to Medill. Across the line from Akash. Bouncing puck handled by the East, but a pass ahead. Battle for the puck at center, taken away by the West. Here comes McLeod. McLeod's had an effective shift the last few minutes. Now behind the net, wraparound attempt, taken away by the defense, and the East heads up the rink. Across the line, it's McBain. He has already scored this period. Tried to throw it in the corner. Dominic Lavoie from Peoria comes the other way. He's got Medill cutting across the line. He's onside. Trying to leave it there for Emmons. Now with the puck, it's Nichols trying to make a play in the near circle. And it's finally taken away there by Murano. Nice long pass ahead for Gruel. He finds Scott, Will uh, Scott uh, uh, Sean Williams, rather. And then Gruel has to retreat and load the gun again. Now he's got the puck on side. He fakes the shot and then fired it wide. Hitting the other way. Across the line is Tuttle. Tuttle leaves it in front for Whitney. Now Tuttle, now right in front of shot and a goal! Brian McKee ties up the hockey game and all of a sudden the biscuits going in the basket with alarming regularity. Well, I tell you, the East were playing five on four in their own end for about 10 seconds. I watched Scotty Gruel come back, and he didn't hustle at all, which meant Brian McKee was wide open on this pass. Scott Gruel, very here he is right here. Great, was very slow in coming up the ice, folks. I'm sorry, but you've got a back check. Take a little pride. I don't care if you're playing in the in the All-Star game or not. You've got to get back in your zone to help out. But, but uh, good shot by McKee. Ties the game up. Ryan McKee, a 27-year-old, plays for Peoria. Signed as a free agent by the St. Louis organization. Peoria's coming out. Here's Whitney behind the defense. He shot and a save. And I'm telling you, Dobson didn't know where that puck was. He was looking behind him. He fortunately had it in the pad. He's been force fed in a hurry here. <laughs> and he's looked behind him twice in a hurry. And here's this young Whitney kid in again. He's battling off, gets the shot. Yes, he hit, showed a lot of strength. And uh, I think Dobson thinks he has it. Somehow the puck ended up behind the net, not in the net. Look at the little young guy smiling. He's having fun out there. Isn't he? He's an all-star. I'd be having fun, too, if I knew I was going to make kind of money. He's going to make it. Well, I'll future. tell you what. Interesting story. Drafted by San Jose. He doesn't sign. He goes to Europe and played about a month and then came here as a free agent. There's a shot there and a goal! Just the man we're talking about. Whitney He's tees it up in the out. slot. And he scores and puts the West back on top. He's right in the right place. This kid knows where to go. I said face-offs were important. West wins the face-off. Get control of the puck. McKee's going to go to a hole. Or Whitney's going to go to a hole. There it is. Boy, quick release. Got it upstairs. Dobson was going down. Told you the kid's smiling. He's having fun. Watch this. Play to the slot. Quick release. Boom. Upstairs. I think the kid might have a future. I think I'd like to be his agent. <laughs> <laughs> now, here they come again. That time, a near miss for Sean White. And here comes McCulloch for the East. Callender goes down, no call. The East keeps it alive. It's Stapleton. Out of the far side, Von Stefanelli. Behind the net for McCulloch. Right in front, but nobody home. Here comes Harkins. This pass across ice. Deflected, kept alive for the East. Kyle 
taken down, no call. Here comes Whitney. Would have been a little hook there, in my opinion, just even off the power play situation. Now, White check that. That's uh, Hafey, not uh, Whitney. That's nine, not eight, cutting across the line. But anyway, we'll get back to more of this Whitney hey. story because it's, it's interesting. <laughs> He's having fun. Uh, the East are on their heels just a little bit right now. They're not skating. Now Al Sims needs to recharge his troops. That's his team. Once enjoying a two-goal lead, has seen the West score three in a row. I've seen him smile a lot when we played Fort Wayne, and I know he's smiling here. They're down a goal inside. I know Al, he's competitive. He wishes they were up by a goal. And I, there'll be a little bit of juice flowing, and he'll be tapping somebody on the back pretty soon. Like, pick her up, boys. Keep that microphone up on the bench a little bit as he, you, you hear him say, let's go, guys. Let's get the next one. Now the West with the draw in the neutral zone. Jeff Delane has a little trouble with it. And Malte able to make a play. Malte couldn't carry through, but Messier has it. Mitch Messier. Nice catch of the pass by Malte. It's amazing to me, Mark, see how these guys can catch that puck in midair. Well, they're athletes. You know, they get trained. Their athletes are highly skilled. <laughs> you know, but, but a baseball player has trouble bunting, and he's got a wider bat and a bigger thing to bunt. The baseball is a lot bigger than a puck, and these guys, with this thing flying up and down, catch that thing two, three, four feet off the reef. You know what? I, if, I, if I watched you play the organ, I'd be amazed at you that <laughs> you can, too. I mean, you practice it all the time. You're good at it. You know, we're out every day, every, every day these guys practice. There's somebody, oh, there's somebody a got a without a stick. Thank you very much. You know, the guys practice all the time, and those things happen in practice all the time. So you develop the skill, and, and uh, consequently, that's what you're seeing. They said there was a lot of skill out there. And hopefully for these young players, they can show enough skill to get themselves to the National Hockey League before not too long. Well, this line here has got to get things going again because they played well tonight. They had a pretty good start to the shift. Cutting in is Medill, and he tries to make a play, and the puck is under a defenseman who made a good play. Now, why wouldn't we get a whistle there? That's because O'Halloran, the well, referee. Wanted, <laughs> just wanted to keep the play going. There wasn't anybody from the West around Brad. He was probably yelling, move it, move it, move it. Wanted to keep the play, wanted to keep the game flowing. But generally, when the referee loses sight of the puck, he'll blow the whistle and stop play. Medill gets across the line. Here's Whitney. Now, when he finished his brief stint in Europe and signed as a free agent with San Diego, there were many in Kansas City upset because as a signee or a draftee of San Jose, they would have hoped that the youngster would have ended up at the San Jose Farm Club in Kansas City. But instead, he's firing on Kansas City. It's turned out to be quite an interesting story here in the IHL. Well, normally, if uh, you're drafted uh, as a youngster like he is, if you're not with the big club, with the San Jose team for, you know, his, his, his uh, big club, then if he's not with them, he's got to go back to junior. Uh, Donnie Waddell, uh, the assistant coach uh, with the West, uh, they found a little loophole, and uh, uh, he's, he's uh, with uh, San Diego playing very well. Now, again, let's go downstairs to Mike Barrick. Well, uh, we're here at ice level and jumping into our broadcast area. Doug Sotard and former NHL goaltender, general manager of the Kansas City Blades. This is not fun for the net miners. No, not really. Uh, it's pretty wide open out there tonight, but uh, the fans are seeing a lot of good action. And I think it's very good for the International Hockey League. You have two goaltenders, Archer Airbay and Wade Flaherty, so the West is well represented from the Kansas City Blades. Yeah, we're very proud of our two goaltenders, and uh, we also have Gary Emmons and Jeff Medill out there. And, trainer and a coach, so uh, we're very well represented. Three NHL teams for you, Winnipeg and the New York Rangers among them. Did you play in any, any All-Star games, Montreal Canadiens? No, I went to Philadelphia, though, and attended my first National Hockey League uh, All-Star game last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago with the National Hockey League, but uh, this is uh, great for the IHL, and uh, hopefully we continue this every year. Thanks, Doug. All right. Doug Sotart, general manager of the Kansas City Blades. And Kansas City, a member of the West contingent that leads in this hockey game right now five to four is the score we're down to two and a half minutes remaining in the second period of play and the west now dominating play here's whitney behind the defense great save and then he gets the rebound home whitney has scored two in a row those are the kids having fun shows a lot of quickness a lot of speed we hit on that at the top of the show 
that the kid was exciting. And look at him smiling. Here we go. Look at him smiling. He's picking up the puck. Brian McKee turns his puck up very well. Look at him. He throws some speed, quickness, controls it, gets the shot, stays with it. Well, the young kids watching out there, he stayed with it. He shot the puck. He didn't skate away from that. He stopped in front. He found his rebound. This kid was hungry. You gotta be a, if you're gonna be a goal scorer, you gotta be hungry for the puck. Look at him. He just chewed off with bite and said, here, behind you. And it's six to four. The West All-Stars have scored four unanswered goals. They were trailing four to two. They've scored four in a row. Here's Sean Williams carrying in for the East. He's got Gruel with him. Gruel couldn't get it by the goaltender. Williams on a wraparound. Couldn't get it in, and the goaltender falls on it. And hangs on. Scott Gruel picked, picked the puck it up, up and threw it behind him. Unfortunately. Well, there's a little, uh... Hey, I think there's a, there is a... Could be an infraction call. It's right here, right there. No, there's no no penalty called there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Dan didn't make a call earlier against a uh, hook against Mikhailik, so he let that one go. It almost results in a goal against. And I'm sure that's what the players on the West team are saying. Here's Robbie Nichols down there. You can see him right away saying, hey, what's going on here? I was hooked down. It almost cost us a goal. Come on, Dan, either blow the whistle or something. As play resumes, the East trying to get back in it. Colin Chin, 26, taken down in front of the net. No call. The West All-Stars break up the rink. One fired wide by Hafey. Along the near board. White digging at it. It comes to center. Chin can't control. Now Von Stefanelli across the line. Feeds one across to the far side, and the West takes over. Wortman having trouble along the near board. Sean Williams giving him a little bit of the lumber. Oh, I'll tell you what, Gruel was almost in the right spot there. There's one by Spon Stefanelli, fired wide. It's deflected to center as now the East is doing some heavy forechecking. Down to the last minute to play here in the second period in the West with a four-goal outburst. Has a six to four lead. Now across the line, here's Hafey. He spun around. Puck played in the far corner, right in front. And White did everything but get it past Dobson. Now behind the net, it's Perry. He can't control along the boards. Chin picks it up. He's turned around, it's kept in, and oh, nice pickup right there as Dobson scoops down with a glove before White can make a deflection. I think uh, this uh, almost surprised Dobson a little. I think it was deflected towards him, you mentioned. Uh, quick glove by him. That's got to make him feel a little bit better because he's seen a lot of, of shots on him. Unfortunately, three or four in a row have gone behind him. That's Sean White, just finishing his shift, 21 years old, plays right wing for Phoenix, drafted by L.A. in the eighth round in 89. Comes in with 14 goals and 34 points. As now Medill throws it in front, deflected in the corner. Picked up by Nelson, but he's caught from behind. Now the East scoops it ahead. Stapleton can't control. He's followed up on the play. Hollander can't control. Here comes Emmons. He's taken down and a penalty coming up on the East. The shot on the save and will finish the second period with a penalty called against the East All-Stars. And the West will have the bulk of a two-minute manpower advantage in the start of the third period. Sims looking on. Mark, tell Stapleton to come. Maybe just one too many infractions out there to... <laughs> And he decided I better make a call. But that was definitely a trip. There's no question. Have a look at there it here. Go. Emmons heading up the rink. Gary's got excellent speed and quickness, and, and uh, he was about to break through the middle of the rink, uh, and with his speed would have got a good shot on that, but he got uh, tripped down. Brad Barry out of Kalamazoo took him down. The faceoff ends.
the second period and I'll tell you what an interesting period John the East comes away with a score right at the goalie change which gave them a two goal lead midway through the period but then four unanswered goals by the West All-Star and little Ray Whitney really having a lot of fun. Yes he certainly is. A couple of those goals I mentioned right off of faceoffs. Uh, the uh, West wins oh, the Dan draws. Us a break. <laughs> Listen to hell. <laughs> Listen to that. Give us a break. Come on. Anyway, uh, they lost a couple of face-offs uh, in the East Zone. Uh, I think uh, Whitney got one. There was another rebound. I think McCosh put one in. We'll go over those in a bit. But but uh, just a few, a little too loose in the East Zone. And right now the West, the speed is showing a little. The I West have a quicker team. Outshot the East 16 to 13 in that period. Leads 6 to 4 at the end of the second period of tonight's IHL All-Star Game. And we'll be right back after these local messages. He was named Athlete of the Decade for redefining excellence in hockey. Now available for the first time in home video, a collection of the greatest moments of his career. Wayne Gretzky, above and beyond. It was religious for me. I never missed. It was like that was my enjoyment in life. He wouldn't go around saying, well, I'm the best and I'm going to be the best. But he always just wanted to be the best. Gretzky, he shoots, he scores! The National Hockey League's most valuable. Promise mess, I wouldn't do this. To order your copy for 1995 plus tax shipping and handling, call 1 800 942 6200 now. It's not only hockey, but it's bungee that jumping. That guy's nuts. Yeah, he's nuts. <laughs> there are many who say that about hockey players and what oh, they no. face on the oh, no, At least we wear helmets. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's take another look at bungee jumping from the top of the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. And I think John Marks you needs your expert, your expert color commentary. I'm afraid to dive out of my pontoon. <laughs> you wouldn't catch me jumping out of a roof. That's got to be a thrill, I'll tell you. That's really got to be a thrill. And then, you know, you don't know where you're going to end up. We've got a scoreboard out there. They've got speakers over there. You could go crashing into anything. All the guys got more nerve than I do. He may be the only one having more fun than young Ray Whitney of San Diego, who has two goals and three assists in a 6-4 to four West lead. Three assists in a 6-4 to four West lead after two periods of play. Hello again, everybody, with John Marks. Ken Doublebag with you in our second iteration. And, John, we saw two distinct different periods within the second period as the East got a couple of goals, got a two-goal lead, and then the West scores four in a row. Exactly. It's 2-1 to one entering the second period. Uh, East comes back with, what, three goals of their own to make it four to two, and all of a sudden it was like the, the Whitney show. Um, uh, in the slot, he, he scores on a quick shot. Uh, he he uh, shows some speed and quickness. Uh, he shows some hunger to get his own rebound. Uh, he set up uh, people for their goals. Uh, he having a lot of fun. We saw him in the, on the screen smiling, so uh, no, it's got to be a thrill to play in a game like we were playing in tonight. And we're going to take you into the West locker room and uh, just kind of eavesdrop a little bit to find out what might be going on there. I would imagine a lot of smiles because they have got themselves a lead at this point in time. Six to four, the score. Smiles, a little conversation. And looking rather confident at this point. Well, in time. you know, when you're up by two going into third period, uh, you've just had a big period. You've got to feel very confident. The guys now are starting to uh, get used to each other a little bit more. I mean, I'm talking about maybe one or two of the players that aren't that haven't played uh, with the, uh, their line mates, uh, you know, throughout this season, but now have played two periods together. These guys adapt fairly quickly. You saw the West, how they picked it up, and uh, consequently got that two-goal lead. But they feel a little more confident now. It's than they did at the very start of this game. I think at this point in time, too, the other interesting factor is that the West will start 
the third period with a minute 57 of power play hockey. And although the first power play was not very effective, as you say, they'll come out with uh, probably a line that plays together and an opportunity to increase this lead right off the bat. Well, that would be something that I think uh, Kevin Constantine might might take into account. If you've got three guys that play in a line uh, are together to get them uh, playing, maybe moving the puck around. I think at this time it's a lot easier to kill a penalty when you haven't played together than it is to score on a power play. Uh, there's just you know you can either pressure those four guys or just get in a in a basic box and say uh, uh, keep people to the outside. Um, uh, if he has a group of five maybe that that are in that room that have played a lot together, then you might see the puck moving around quite a bit. But if the uh, West scores, it's going to be a very big hill to climb for the East to come back and maybe win this hockey game. This is one of a number of showcase events for hockey in Atlanta as they prepare to bring professional hockey back in next season. These Atlanta Knights will join the IHL for next year. They've had a couple of exhibitions down here. The Olympic team played a couple of exhibitions down here. And these fans, a good hardcore group of hockey fans in the Atlanta area, hungry for hockey, which will come south in a big way, not only in Atlanta, Georgia, but it'll go into Florida as the NHL Tampa Bay Lightning will come into play with, again, a couple of former Chicago Blackhawks bringing hockey to the south. Tony Esposito and uh, Phil Esposito, of course, uh, uh, with the Tampa Bay team. Um, I have, was lucky enough to play with the Blackhawks, of course, and we played in this building when the Flames were here, the Atlanta Flames were here. And uh, I remember the fans were excellent fans here, Ken. Uh, there was obviously a lot of excitement at these games. They uh, had a couple of uh, years where they had some excellent hockey uh, teams. I uh, get a chance to play with Tom Lysiak, who is a big uh, player here. I think Kurt Bennett uh, mentioned that he might be here tonight. He's still living here. He was a good player, and, and uh, it was just a fun time, a fun town to come and play hockey in. And they'll have hockey for next year in the IHL, and we'll have more from the Omni in Atlanta after we take this time out. It's 6-4. to four. The West leads the East after two. If you're worried about hair loss, I understand. Listen to how I felt before I became a client at HRS of Atlanta. If there was a way that I could get my hair back you know, gradually, like the way I lost it, I, I would do that today. Hi, I'm Ron Zu, president of HRS of Atlanta. I've helped thousands of men and women solve their hair loss problems. John's solution was a new gradual step-by-step -step procedure. I called HRS of Atlanta for free information. You can too. Call the toll-free number on your screen and find out how you can feel better about your hair loss and yourself. Now I want to be out there, out seeing clients. With the gradual process, I could have my hair back and nobody would notice. Would you? For free information, call HRS of Atlanta now at 1-800-453-9600. HRS is conveniently located at 3121 Piedmont Road. That's 1-800-453-9600. Great legs. Thank you. How do you get them? I used to do aerobics till I dropped. Then I found Thigh Master. Every single time you squeeze Thigh Master, you strengthen and tone right where you need it. So it's easy to squeeze, squeeze your way to shapely hips and thighs. I thought I'd never fit into these jeans again. Thank you, Thigh Master. I recommend it and use it. The secret to shapely thighs is exercising these muscles with just the right resistance. This balanced resistance coil is designed to give you results quickly and comfortably. Want to tone your upper chest and arms? Thigh Master will give you excellent results. Thigh Master, we may not have been born with great legs, but now we can look like we were. To order your Thigh Master, call 1-800-533-1400. Have your credit card ready or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.50 for shipping and handling to this address. No CODs, please. If you're not fully satisfied, return it in 30 days for your money back. Plus, if you call right now, we'll also send you Suzanne Slender for Life Plan absolutely free. So call now for quick delivery. Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome back to our Between Periods activities, the Western Division leading the East by a score of 6-4. to four. Hope you're enjoying the hockey game, and one gentleman that I'm sure is enjoying it maybe a little bit more than most is the commissioner of the International Hockey League, Tom Barry. And, Tom, uh, what a showcase here tonight. Hey, this is great. It's just tremendous to be in Atlanta enjoying this game. I think that the fans are showing their enjoyment, and the players are showing their appreciation for being All-Stars. It's a great game, and we're really thrilled to be here. Tom, I'm sure the fans uh, that are watching this uh, here in the Atlanta area and throughout the country wondering, how did this all come about? Well, you know, we've been working with our competitor league, the American Hockey League, in an attempt to get uh, 
postseason game, if you will, between the two of us that we could play off each other. And unfortunately, we get about that far apart, and they say, well, sorry, we can't do it. So we just decided it was time that we put on an all-star event of our own. We've got the talent, we've got the ability, and we've got the venues. And as we showed here in Atlanta tonight, we're ready. And uh, we're going to be in Phoenix next year. We're going to be in Fort Wayne the year after. So this is an annual event that we're really happy about and enjoying. And I think that we're going to show the fans all around the country what kind of hockey we play in the International Hockey League. Boy, the IHL has really progressed. It's gone from a Midwest bus league to a league spanning uh, the West and now Atlanta and the uh, southern part of the United States. So what's next for the IHL? Well, there's always uh, lots of applications coming in, if you will, lots of phone calls and letters that say, hey, I'd like to play hockey in your league. And we sort through them and have an opportunity to find out if, whether the city can support them and whether or not the building will be able to support them and whether the people have the wherewithal to make it go. So it takes a long time. And right now we do have a, another team that may come in for the 92 93 season aside from Atlanta and uh, that may well happen within the next couple of weeks because after that we feel it's too late to start for 92 93 so we're always ready and always open to have something more come along and we're excited we want another Western partner and we're looking forward to possibly having one boy uh, this league is uh, growing in leaps and bounds of San Diego and Phoenix and Kansas City uh, the most recent addition now the Atlanta Knights well I think the pleasurable part of being the commission is that uh, you have an opportunity to witness what people have done in their own private businesses which gave them the wherewithal to move into the hockey field and uh, they take that same enthusiasm and ability the marketing of their product whatever it may have been in the real world if you will and they take that same enthusiasm and product marketing to the world of hockey and in there we suddenly find that we can take areas that haven't been too hockey involved to become number one franchises and we're able to move on into the bigger cities where they become really interested in the game of hockey. Our product is great. It's first class. It's only a fraction of a step behind the National Hockey League. We develop players, coaches and referees who move into the National Hockey League. So we're doing our job and in the process of doing that we're making people and the fans see, see the greatest hockey in the world. So we're really enthused. Well, the attendance figures are absolutely terrific. Uh, Peoria drawing great crowds. Fort Wayne, uh, I think 13 sellouts or more this season. Uh, Milwaukee, 13,000 last night. The attendance figures in this league are absolutely uh, terrific. That's right. Well, again, it's a credit to our owners and general managers and all the people that put their life for, uh, from uh, 9 to 9 really every day on the job. They go out and they market the product, and then the players put forth such a great effort that the people come back and again and again and again to see a great evening's entertainment. And that's what we're selling is entertainment. Why we all love the game of hockey, it's entertainment we're selling, and we're really uh, appreciative of the fact that the fans continue to come in the numbers that they have. It's amazing. Fans may not know, but Tom Barry has been an official in uh, pro hockey. He's also a former owner of a WHA team, the Indianapolis Racers. And you've been in charge of the officials for quite some time. No penalties through 40 minutes of play. Well, that's the training that our officials have gotten. You know, they forgot their whistles. They've got to come to a game without something. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's coming from the commissioner uh, right now. Tom, uh, continued uh, success with the IHL. We're excited about the growth of this league. Hey, thanks very much, Mike. It's always a pleasure. And thank you to those people out there who have made this be the league that it is. Tom Berry, Commissioner of the International Hockey League, and uh, what a game we have here at the Omni between the Eastern and Western Divisions here tonight. Thank you, Mike Perrick. Six to four, the West leads. We're coming back with highlights from the second period and more. Stay with us as we get ready for third period action of tonight's IHL All-Star Game.